Hi, my name is Winston Gao, and today we're going to talk about fluoride. Now, this is a very hot, controversial subject of whether one should or shouldn't have fluoride in your system. Well, let's stick to some very simple basics. Fluoride is a highly corrosive element, okay? The most toxic element on planet Earth that's common will be arsenic. The second thing is fluoride. The third thing is lead. So, fluoride sits between lead and arsenic. So that kind of tells you that this is quite toxic, okay? Uh, the maximum contamination goal that they set for water standards is zero for arsenic, zero for lead, and 4,000 parts per billion for fluoride. Like, what's wrong with this picture? It's called politics. That's what's wrong with this picture, okay? Now let's take a look at who put fluoride in the water first. Who was the first guy that did it? That was Hitler. He put it in the concentration camps. Well, let's face it. He wasn't concerned of the health of the prisoners in the concentration camp, right? He wanted them to be docile, not to rebel. Right? That was his goal. That's why he put fluoride in the water. And he put a specific type of fluoride in the water. It was called hydrofluoric silicic acid. That's the identical material that's in your drinking water. 68% of the cities in the United States has fluoridation. And hydrofluoric silicic acid is made from metal plating industries, waste acids. That acid is then sold to Florida phosphate mining. They washed the soft rock phosphate with the hydrofluoric silicic acids. That's how they flush out the fluoride, the excess chromium, the excess um, strontium-90. The waste material is called hydrofluoric silicic acid. That's what's put into your drinking water. So, that's not a good thing. It doesn't require rocket science to figure out that that's really industrial waste, okay? Now, even as low as 0.8 parts per million, some 25% of the population are going to develop fluor fluorosis. Now, fluorosis is just little white spots on your teeth, which, of course, is going to require cosmetic surgery, okay? The other thing you should understand is that fluoride most definitely hardens your teeth, hardens your bone. Well, you say, well, that's good, isn't it? Well, not really. Mother Nature really thought it through. She wanted your teeth to be a certain hardness, and she wanted the teeth to be a certain toughness, okay? Now, like a diamond, it's very hard, cuts through glass, but you can take a hammer and go smack, and it just turns into powder, shatters, okay? It's very hard, but it's not very tough. So, your teeth are made right there perfectly when you were born to be hard enough to bite through bones, but tough enough to not shatter. It's the same thing with your leg bones and your arms, right? You, 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 you want to be able to jump, hit the ground, have a little flexibility to your bones so that they don't snap and break. This is why you start seeing older people their bones lose the flexibility and they do something and they walk and they trip and their bones snap and break because it's gotten hard and crispy. Okay? So fluoride makes your bones crispy. Not a good thing. So it's just common sense. It doesn't have to be a controversy, it's good, bad. Just, just think with the data and you know that this item should be removed from your drinking water. I certainly going to do it for myself. This is a particular system that I built originally for myself and now I actually sell it to other people. And it actually will take out fluoride from the water. I have a big whole house system here. In addition to this, I still have another tank inside of the house that also takes the fluoride down to non-detectable levels. Even my small systems, they weigh 40 pounds. Those are my small systems. Here you're looking at a system that's 350 plus pounds, okay? It takes volume. Hydrofluoric silicic acid is difficult to take out. Very difficult to take out. So, when you start seeing other people saying these teeny weeny little countertop fluoride removal systems that got to be changed every couple months, first of all, they're not going to take it out to non-detectable level. It'll take about 80% of it out when it's brand spanking new. And within a thousand gallons, it's down to 60%. So, it's really not doing the job. And the cost is actually four or five times more expensive than mine because these, these systems will last you seven to ten years 
whereas the other systems that you will see will only last a couple months. So the cost of maintenance is really going to rack up. Sure, the cost for a couple months is going to be only a couple hundred bucks every three months. <laughs> These will run you a couple thousand dollars, but it'll last proratively speaking, you know, this is over a seven to ten year time period. So cost-wise, these are significantly cheaper and it will take it out to non-detectable levels, which nobody else is going to make such a claim. I expect you to check out that I'm telling you the truth. When you get the systems installed, you can check the water and see that you do in fact get non-detectable levels of fluoride. This is a good thing. That's my opinion and hopefully it's your opinion and that you will actually do something with this information. Take the fluoride out of your drinking water for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones. Thank you very much for listening.